Uh, the toilets at St. Austell Police Station have been stolen. Police say they have nothing to go on. Uh, this video, the last for tropical storms before the case study, is uh, in the red box there, monitoring prediction, protection and planning to reduce the effects of tropical storms. A similar layout to a uh, very similar title in the earthquake section regarding the same topics. Just a reminder, the aim of all management is to reduce damage and death, to protect value and to reduce vulnerability. If the management can be shown to achieve these three aims, uh, you can generally consider it a successful management strategy. And that would apply regardless if it was rivers or coastal management or um, earthquake management. These are three factors that we're after. So we do the first two together, uh, monitoring and prediction. They are actually separate, but you'll see quite quickly that the two lead into each other. So monitoring first using scientific equipment to track atmospheric hazards. If you look across the right hand side, you'll see a satellite. Um, I love in that image, it looks like the satellite's facing the wrong way because you can see the hurricanes in the distance there and you'd almost be screaming at the satellite to turn slightly. But um, uh, scientific equipment, including satellite, what you can do is you can keep an eye on uh, tropical storms that may or may not develop over warm waters. What this allows you to do is if you monitor correctly, then you can actually make a prediction, which is an estimation of where and when a tropical storm may cause social, economic, environmental impacts. Um, I guess also something that you can do here is also to predict the uh, size or strength of a hurricane or typhoon as well. So in terms of monitoring um, and prediction, I suppose, if you look to the right hand side again, you'll see a sea, sea surface temperature um, map which has been drawn from uh, satellite imagery uh, and also ocean buoys, which will uh, measure the heat of the ocean. Quite useful this because you can therefore work out how strong you believe a hurricane will be. Um, this obviously uh, picture is from Florida, but the same also applies uh, off the coast of the Philippines for your case study of Typhoon Haiyan. Or those of you who did Hurricane Irma, this is the image that actually you'd be interested in. In terms of the monitoring, uh, that therefore means you can make a prediction, you can you can guess where you think the um, storm will go. If you look at the Typhoon Haiyan track below, you'll notice that the uh, track gets wider and wider and wider because you're not 100% certain where this um, storm is going to go. Uh, from the 8th of November is its tracked point, but then the 9th, 10th and 11th is a little bit of a guess as to where they believe this storm will be but you can track using your satellite as well as your ocean temperatures to try and work out where a storm is likely to go. Now you can argue that prediction is the most important management in terms of a um, tropical storm because if you can monitor and predict where an earthquake is it enables you to put in place your plan a slide that we'll come to a little bit later. Crucially, it can enable you to evacuate Typhoon Ian, evacuate 800,000 people uh, from the Philippines prior to the typhoon arriving. And Hurricane Irma also had that ability to um, put its plan into place by flipping uh, the roads of the I-75, I-95 to, to get people away. Without the prediction and the monitoring in place, then that simply wouldn't be possible. So you can argue that prediction is the most important factor. However, you can also argue that the prediction in itself might be inaccurate. The prediction in itself doesn't get people safe. It's the action afterwards that keeps people safe. So perhaps actually plan and protection is more important. Just a little example there of some evaluation. If you get a question regarding uh, prediction is the most important factor, you can argue both sides. Part two, next keyword is protection. Definition there, design buildings slash the environment to reduce damage. In terms of tropical storms, in a very similar fashion to earthquakes, one of the most important things to remember is building design. And we've got there a um, design from Texas where you'll notice that the actual house is 25 feet above the ground, held up with reinforced concrete columns. The concept being you get the house as far off the ground as you possibly can so the storm surge which is the biggest threat really that for example in typhoon Ian, again it was a five meter storm surge a similar size in hurricane irma if you get the people above five meters uh level like for example you're 20 feet there it means that they won't be at risk of drowning uh, they won't be at risk of being washed away the roof so 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 important to make sure your roof tiles are well attached 
this is where a little bit of an issue comes in here. You want to have, um, in a perfect world, you almost want to have light tiles, but them to be actually really well attached. Because what you don't want is heavy roof tiles being pulled off during the storm and being uh, thrown around the area by up to 100 mile per hour winds. Um, the other one to be aware of here, it's... Um, is it in the diagram? Let me just check. Oh, there it is in the diagram. It's the foundation. It's the underground support columns there, which literally anchor the house down into the ground and therefore less likely to, to collapse. Furthermore, in terms of buildings, um, you can actually see a sea wall there on the left hand side image. A sea wall can also be used to try and uh, mitigate the effect of storm surge by increasing friction on the waves and therefore trying to keep buildings behind the uh, sea wall safer. However, for you guys, if you get a question regarding protection, it's probably best to go down the route of building design. The final section, I'm going to break into two sections here, which is planning, which is where you identify and reduce risk. We'll start with individuals here. On the right hand side is a hurricane emergency pack and you'll see some of the bits and bobs in there. You've got a radio, you've got a um, battery powered or wind up torch, you've got a basic first aid kit. You've also got some activities there on the right hand side to keep children entertained and also a wet weather poncho. The concept being here that you the individual themselves can can reduce the possible impact on them by having a bag that's ready to go in case a, a typhoon or hurricane warning comes in they can quickly evacuate keep themselves safe furthermore on the left hand side is just a random road map of any place i could find if the uh, residents know their escape routes they know what the fastest way out of the city is and obviously this can be advised by the government as well as we'll come to in a moment but the concept is to make sure they know the local surroundings make sure they know a place that they can to to be safe as well as all of the roads out or in to the city in terms of the government slash local authority, it's exactly the same plan, identify and reduce the risk. Uh, we'll start on the right hand side, um, a really bizarre image here, which is uh, your roads, uh, I think this is the I-75, travelling in both directions during Hurricane Irma. The same was repeated, don't forget, in Typhoon Haiyan for the Pan-Philippine Highway, where uh, your cars are on the wrong side of the road. If you look to um, the uh, right hand side of the image, you can see that the sign is actually facing the wrong way for that traffic. The concept being that you've opened the extra three lanes running north and south in this case, it doubles the amount of people you can evacuate. So that's part of the government plan that can be put in place quickly is to flip the, the road system to evacuate more people. On the left hand side is uh, an image from Hurricane Irma again, which is uh, the concept that we can get these people to uh, safe large rooms. I believe this is a college or secondary school within the United States of America. And the idea is this is a safe area away from the hurricane, which is designated before the hurricane has started. And it's a place where you go, well, that's a safe building. Let's advise people to move there. Furthermore, in terms of the plan, don't forget that um, you've got to communicate uh, these ideas with people so in the philippines they had those uh, loudspeakers in the united states of america you'll have text messages sent you'll have internet updates you'll have tv um forecasts even radio messages uh, even automated road signs telling people there is a hurricane inbound and that therefore those people will act upon that and can escape from um, the situation they find themselves in all of that is part of the plan that the government needs to have ready. Uh, I would also advise the local council to have um, a large stockpile of uh, food, of water, of clothing, of uh, tents, of sleeping bags as well, just so if the worst comes to the worst, those people um, can be safe because the uh, local council the government has identified and reduced the risk. Now, I'm aware one of your case studies for typhoons or hurricanes or cyclones, for that matter, is not New Zealand. However, you can identify the NZERT team here, the New Zealand Emergency Response Team, which also would act in the instance of uh, extreme weather such as tropical storms that could affect New Zealand or Australia. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if there's anything you're not too sure about, please come and see us down in H8.